Okay, I want to talk to you about pressure reducing devices or metering devices. Basically, there are two types of uh, pressure reducing devices and air conditioning systems. One type would be a fixed um, pressure reducing vice. In other words, the size of the opening is, is constant. It doesn't expand or contract. Um, now, the other type would be a floating type or throttling valve that would open and close according to the load of the system. So that's the main two types of pressure reducing devices or metering de devices you will find. Now, we have also, in the subcategories, we have two types of fixed pressure reducing devices. One is a piston or a um, accurator device. Now, what that is, is just provides a restrict restriction for the refrigerant to flow into that decreases its pressure. So, on, you can see on this system, it's a heat pump system, so it allows the flow to travel both ways, therefore we have two different uh, piston accurators here. Now, the other type of fixed uh, pressure reducing device or metering device is what we refer to as a capillary tube, and you can see here, and again, you have two tubes on here and it allows flow in both directions with the check valve. And this is just a long um, spiral copper tubing that uh, creates a restriction in the refrigerant flow as it travels through it and reduce, therefore reduces the pressure. Now there, those are the main two types of fixed uh, pressure reducing valves that you will, you will find. Now the non-fixed or the throttling type pressure reducing device is referred to as a thermal expansion valve or a TXV. Sometimes you see it written as a TXV. Now what that consists of is a main valve body and spring and head and that's of course attached to the entering side of the evaporator just as the fixed devices would be. But it monitors the temperature and pressure by a capillary tube and a sensing bulb that, that is actually attached on the leaving side of the evaporator. Now, of course, we know the, the, the temperature and pressure relationship um, of refrigerants. Uh, so how this valve operates is a sensing bulb will detect a temperature, and it tries to maintain a pre predetermined amount of superheat, usually about 10 degrees. And as that temperature changes, either it gets warmer or cooler, it will actually send a signal back here to this spring and of course with temperature change we have a pressure change. So that either throttles the valve closed or open according to the load. So if the uh, sensing bulb detects a warmer temperature or above uh, superheat, say around 13 to 14 degrees, it may throttle the valve open and allow more charge to come into the system or more refrigerant to flow in the system. Now it's very important to know what type of pressure reducing device you may have in a system because we all, as we all know in learning in the previous lesson we learned about superheat and subcooling. Well if you have a thermal expansion valve or TXV in the system you can't solely rely on checking superheat at your evaporator coil because you may have a low amount of refrigerant in the system or a higher amount of refrigerant in the system maybe overcharged or undercharged and you will still may uh, read you still may read 10 degrees of superheat uh, checking across your evaporator coil with this type of TXV. So not only is it important to check the superheat to make sure that your TXV is operating properly, you also need with the TXV system to check the subcooling on the condenser side to be sure that you have the proper charge in the system. All right.